Hey guys, Kevin Muldoon here. In this video, what I'm going to do is unbox and then review the T10 car Bluetooth transmitter. I've been looking at a lot of FM transmitters in my videos recently, and this is one I'm keen to look at because it's got display, it's got more navigation buttons than the other options out there, and it looks pretty good. You can see some of the features in the back of the box here. It's got a built-in microphone, noise cancellation, hands-free calling, um, it accepts micro SD cards, can take an aux in cable as well. It's got a single USB for charging. And the one thing to know about this is that this has actually been sold by many, many different companies. Um, the one that's, that I've got it for is branded as, I don't know if you can see that there, Patuxen. No idea how you pronounce that, but that's who sold it. To me and um, you know it's sold as many different names you know this is this is a common theme amongst these kind of things they all come from China and then people just put their, their own branding on it so we'll look inside the box and then I'm going to go down to my car I'm going to test it out for a while and then show you exactly how it works show you what's good what's not okay so you've got a little instruction manual here it is in a few different languages. I'll be referring to this to try and figure it out. We've got an aux in cable. That's good to have. I believe that is one meters long, so hopefully that's long enough. One of the other ones that I got the other day, I reviewed, and the aux in cable was quite short. So when the cable's too short, you effectively have to go out and buy your own. So hopefully this is long enough. And this is the device itself. This is clearly, this is by far the, the biggest one I've reviewed so far. Nothing else in the box here. Um, most of the other ones, are, you know, it's just got this little bit here. It's quite small. Um, it looks good, though. It's got that branding on it there. Patuxen. You can see it there. I, I, I don't know. And when you look in the pictures on the box, etc., it's made out like this thing is pretty big. It's, I, mean, I had this in, idea in my head that this thing was going to be huge. But it's not. It's really, really small. And... It looks good. I like how the USB is actually away from the controls. That's quite a good thing because, you you know, you'd have your phone charging going that way and then you can see the display. You've got a dial here. It's got the phone. So I imagine this works as play as pause as well. You can navigate. Buttons seem responsive there. It's got a channel up and down buttons. I'm not sure if those also control music like folders. You've got an SD slot here and you've got the aux input. So I'm going to go down to my car right now and we'll test it all out. I'll show you how it works, show you what's good and show you what isn't. So I've been in my car now for about 30 minutes or so. I've been playing around with it and I'm quite impressed with it so far. I've tested most features. There's a few things I've not been able to test um, completely yet and I'll get to that. But what I want to first talk about is the aux in cable. I'll just quickly show you that before I move on. Uh, get it on top here if I can get it. That's going to fall, isn't it? This is probably doing everything one handed. Okay, so it's now connected with aux in and you can see it's now playing. Now, the aux in works great. The problem, as you can see here, is when you're doing aux in, no buttons will work. So that is something to bear in mind. You know, you're going to use the aux in cable. You need to do everything through your smartphone or your MP3 player. All it does is just send the signal to the device. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, quite happy with how that works though. The aux in cable is quite long and it's always hard to keep one of these, you know, because say for example, you're going on a long, a long trip if you're connected via Bluetooth, you can always use the aux in cable and allow a friend to quickly connect without having to connect to Bluetooth again, so that's quite useful. I'll just quickly show you the screen here. And the screen works quite good. You can see here it's got T10, which is a device name. It's got a pause, because the, the song is paused. It's got Bluetooth, T10, unconnected. Now, this all works the volume up and down. You've got skipping track, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. 
the channel now you can see it's an 87.5 and that's how easy it is to change it you just use these channel buttons to change it and then you make sure that you've got the same channel on your radio that all works quite well now connecting is is really really easy you go to your bluetooth switch it on and you can see i'm connecting there t10 paired i'll say it's paired and you might notice there as well it's now coming up nexus 6p you can see the bluetooth symbol you can see the that the track is paused and if i push play it's really responsive skip track skip track again oh, paused skip track the other thing is if when you're driving you can turn the volume up and down using that now this is no different to any other FM transmitter you need to find the right signal you need to get the volume in your, your phone up, get it as high as you can and kind of keep this volume low. If you do the opposite, if you keep the volume low on your smartphone and then high on your radio, then you're going to get that buzzing. It's not a problem, that's just how these things work. So keep it kind of low in your, in your car audio system and put it up and then So, there's a few other things um, I want to show you. Um, firstly, is, in fact, I'll show you the, the, the car the charger. So, I've got a multimeter here. I'll go out and I'll plug in. I'll take this phone off. See, doing all this one handed, it's an absolute pain. I need hire an assistant. So, my phone is in. You can see that it's charging. Well, you should be able to see it's a little charging symbol. And if I move this out of the way, you can see that I'm getting 1.3 amps. And that's what that's the most that I get with a smartphone with this cable. So, it should do up to 2.1 amps. And it looks like it does deliver that. So, that's good. Uh, as you can see there, you know, when you're moving this around, it's really good. I really like how you can move that around because, you know, depending on where, if your car charger was up here, you can bring it upwards or downwards depending on what you need. And it also means that, you know, the cable isn't getting in the way. You know, you can direct it that way away from the, the transmitter. The screen, I don't know if it's coming through, but it's really, really clear. Uh, you know, obviously it's, it's going to get dark soon, but at the moment it's, it's light. But the screen looks great just now, and you know it's not reflective. And at night time, I'm sure it looks amazing in the dark. So I'm really, really happy with it. The one thing I can't check for you all just now is the micro SD card. Now I've actually got two micro SD cards, and I've got them. If I can get them out here, I've got music in both of them. I have all the music in one folder, and then the tracks underneath, which is how it works in nearly all the ones I've tried now you kind of put it in upside down here see it and you push it in until it clicks now compared to some of the other ones there it, there's no risk of it getting lost the one that I tried the other day you know it was like it was almost like two slots and the one up above was actually it was putting your SD card into the, like the motherboard almost this one is it's a lot more cleaner now to change to the SD card, all you do is you hold in the, the next track button, but if you can see here, it doesn't do that with me, and if I push play, it just goes back to the music. So, I'm doing that, and it's not changing. Now, I wasn't sure what, it, what the problem was, and that's why I've got two SD cards here. It, the same problem with this SD card as well. Now, I wasn't sure if it was because these were, you know, fast cards, which are mainly used for cameras. But if I put this in here... <laughs> that wasn't good. Now, both of these 
cards work and I actually use them on a pretty much daily basis with cameras so I know they work and then see how it's not skipping it occasionally sometimes you get this kid it's going up like a zero see like that as if it's as if it's working correctly you see that there it's coming to zero now that's I suspect that's what you want that, that's another thing that I'll point out um, now, I'm not sure what the exact problem is, but I quickly checked the Amazon listing and it does say that the max capacity is 32 gigabytes. So both of these cars, cards are 64 gigabyte. If you can see that there. That's 64 gigabyte and it didn't work. This one's 64 gigabyte as well. And that one didn't work either, so... I hope I've not lost that. There's a good chance of it. Um, that was a 64 gigabytes as well. So, unfortunately... I can't test that aspect. I wanted to see how it worked and I wanted to see if the CH buttons change channels or change folders or anything like that. I'm not sure. It doesn't say in the manual that it does. I'm just kind of guessing. If not, you're going to have to skip through every track manually, which will be a pain. But it's still good to see that functionality added to the system. I will say those, you know, I checked Amazon reviews, I read a lot of reviews and I checked a few videos and I saw other people using that SD card so I think it's something to do either with my cards or because of the capacity so I don't think it's a feature that is broken I think it's just I've been unlucky with the card that I've got I wish you know that I had a 2 gig card 8 gig card or 32 gig card so that I can show you all but unfortunately I can't so the one thing I've not showed you yet is calls and uh, if I what I was planning on doing you know sometimes uh, you know I call my parents or I call my girlfriend or something but what I'm going to do now is just phone like the train hotline and hopefully I can get someone on and we can test this um, so it should all go through the system welcome to national rail inquiries if you're looking for train times or fares please press 1 to use our automated train tracker service or press 2 to speak to an advisor. Hi, you speak me with Shraddha, may I help you? Hi there, can you tell me the next train from Glasgow to Edinburgh? From Glasgow Central? From Glasgow going to Edinburgh? Yeah. The next train departs uh, Glasgow Queen Street at 16.30. Okay, okay, thanks for that. Um, can you tell me, is, this, is, it, is the call quite clear? I'm using a a new device, is the call Pardon? clear? Pardon? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you okay. Okay, that's great. Thanks a lot for your help, thank you. Is there anything else I can help you? No, with that's it. No, that's it. Thanks a lot for your time, thank you. Thank you for calling, bye. Thank you, bye. So, I'll turn that off just now, and I'll take this out. And I'll turn that off. So, I've just wasted the time of National Rail, but it was good to kind of just, you know, make a call through it and see how we got on. Now, I've reviewed quite a lot of these recently and, you know, I'm kind of building a picture of what I like about these things and what I don't like. Um, a lot of the other ones I've got, the kind of, the, they're all dual USB ports and they all offer, um, most of them offer... USB streaming through a flash drive. Some of them also offer through a micro SD card. This one doesn't offer USB streaming. It only offers um, streaming through the um, through a micro SD card or through your Bluetooth. What I will say about that though is that in general, I don't think you know using an SD card as useful as it is to you know have music. It's not practical because you know you're skipping tracks. If you get thousands of you know tracks, you know lots of albums, skipping through the music is going to be a pain. It's not going to be a big issue if you only have a couple of albums, but if you've got a lot of albums, it's going to be a pain to navigate them. And I think you're better controlling everything through your phone, through iTunes, through Amazon Music, through Spotify, that kind of thing. Now I've been with all the things that I've all the charges that I've been reviewing, I have been essentially I've been unboxing them, I've been testing them in my car for like an hour or so, doing a video. And then I've been trying to use them for a day or so. But the one I keep coming back to just so far is just a simple solution. This is from Perbeat. And it's just dual USB and it's got an aux in cable. Now this doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It only has two USB ports. But they both work. And 
it just works really easily and you get a clear signal compared to an FM transmitter. This is the first one that I kind of like. Um, the downsides to this, I guess, it, you don't have USB streaming, but again, as I say, this is a big thing. It only has one USB port. But as I've shown in quite a few of my videos, when there's two USB ports, uh, USB ports and one of them uh, is, is for streaming, then you'll find that, you know, the meter shows that one of them does about 1.5 to 2 amps and the other one only does 0 0.5 amps. So whilst you are getting two USB ports, you're not going to get fast charging through them. So that's something to bear in mind. I like the fact that this has an aux in port as well. I think that's good because, you know, if you don't want to lose your battery, if you just want to plug in an MP3 player or something like that, you know, you can do it through that. For example, you could use this without your smartphone. You can transmit to a radio station. You can get something, say, for example, an iPod Shuffle, an old MP3 player. You could plug this into the MP3 player and just control it through that. So all you have to do is you would connect it through the aux in port. So that's a really, you know, that's really handy to have as well. I do think, you know, when you put in the aux in, you lose navigation. But again, when you put music in via a micro SD card or with other devices through a USB flash drive, navigating these things is a real pain. Um, I was really impressed with the screen. I really like that screen. And, and I, I like the way that this bends around. It, it's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. And... All in all, I'm really, really happy with this. You know, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't test the micro SD card for you all, but I must admit, I'm really, really happy with this. The calls seem clear, and, you know, although the aux in cable that I've been using works well, I do like this as well, because I think, well, for one, you get that LCD screen, it's quite cool. I like having this button. I think, you know, the other the other one there, it has one single button, but I like how I can control the volume. You know, if something happens, I can turn the volume down. I can push play, pause easily. And I really like how it works. And calls seem okay. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. As you can see, this one, I'm not even going to pronounce that one, but this is called the T10. And I, I, yeah, I think it's quite good. I'm going to check out a few other solutions. I've got a couple of things I want to do a review of, and then I want, I want to do a comparison for you all. But you can see that through these videos, I'm kind of formulating an opinion about what works and what doesn't. And... You know, I'm all for additional features, but a lot of these companies, a lot of these devices coming out of China, they add lots of bells and whistles to try and sell it. They'll say, oh, it streams music, it does this, it does that. But then these features don't work well, you know, so it's all, it's all good adding these extra features, but really, you need it needs to be functional, it needs to work well. And you need to remember that you're going to be controlling these things whilst you're driving your car, you know, while you're going to the shops, while you're on the motorway. So... You really don't want to be messing about with it too much, you know. I, I think having a track button left or right and, and a player pause button is as much as you need. I did like as well, though, that this has got um, the channel plus and minus buttons because it makes tuning the channel really, really easy. And bear in mind, again, this is an FM transmitter. You need to find the right channel. I picked a few channels. It was 108. I picked first and it was a little bit of buzzing. I was finding it better on 87.5. But it really depends on the area that you're in as to which one works best you always get a clearer sound from an aux in cable which you know using that aux in cable that i have there i'll always get a, a clearer signal but the benefit of this is that i'm using bluetooth that means there's no cables flying around the place so that is something uh, that is a bonus and i really like this so yeah i would recommend this to someone this is you know i've i've reviewed re uh, can't even talk i've got the cold i keep so dehydrated day. Um, yeah, this this is probably the first charger, um, you know, out of the last three or four that I've reviewed that I would actually recommend to someone. And it's not perfect, you know, but it's not far off it, if I'm honest. You know, it's really good. I like this. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to switch between these two for the next week and then see which one I prefer. But thanks for watching, guys. Anyway, if you've got any questions about the T10, uh, under, you know, this is, again, it's sold under many different names but if you get any questions about it please do ask a question i'll do my best to answer them if you've enjoyed the video please do consider liking or sharing the video and subscribing to my future videos and until next time take care